weekend we saw a referendum in Crimea that took place in the shadow of a Russian military intervention in Ukraine. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that the referendum was illegal, illegitimate and in direct violation of the terms of the Ukrainian constitution? Does he also share my deep concern following the news that a Ukrainian serviceman was shot and killed at a military base in Crimea yesterday? Well, the Right Honourable Gentleman is absolutely correct that the referendum in the Crimea is illegitimate and illegal. It was spatchcocked together in 10 days and held at the point of a Russian Kalashnikov. This cannot be accepted uh, or legitimised by the international community. I think we should be absolutely clear about what has happened here. This is the annexation, effectively, of one country's territory by another country. And we must be absolutely clear about our interests, which is to see a rules-based international system where countries obey the rules. And if we turn away from this crisis and don't act, we will pay a very high price in the longer term. So we should be clear that this referendum is illegitimate. We must be clear that consequences must follow. And we should work with our European partners and with the United States for a strong, consistent and robust response. Ed Miliband. I thank the Prime Minister for that answer, Mr Speaker. I'd like to ask him about the meetings that are coming up. The White House has indicated that their sanctions will be expanded, and I'm sure the whole House will support the idea that the list of Ukrainian and Russian officials targeted by asset freezes and travel bans will also be extended at the EU Council meeting tomorrow. Can I ask the Prime Minister to tell the House the circumstances in which he'll be supporting also additional wider economic and trade sanctions on the Russian Federation? Well, as we discussed previously in the House, the European Union set out some very clear triggers. We said that if the Russians did not take part in a contact group with the Ukrainian government to take forward discussions, then asset freezes and travel bans should follow. Those have been put in place at the Foreign Affairs Council on Monday, and I believe further action on that front should be taken at the European uh, Council of Ministers, uh, which I'll take part in on Thursday. I also think we should be responding to the fact of this annexation, that, that we said that if there was further action to destabilise the Ukraine, and this annexation is that action, further consequences need to follow. We need to set that out on Thursday in concert with our European partners, and at the same time, I think we need to put down a very clear warning that if there was further destabilization, for instance going into the eastern Ukraine in any way, then we would move to a position of uh, the sorts of economic sanctions that we discussed in the House last week. Red Miliband. Well, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister should know that from this side of the House he will have our support for the toughest possible diplomatic and economic measures against the Russian Federation, given the totally illegitimate actions that they have taken. I also welcome the announcement yesterday that the G7 allies will gather next week in The Hague. Mr Speaker, given Russia's actions, it seems inconceivable that they can remain in the G8. So does the Prime Minister now agree that this meeting of the G8 should go further and explicitly decide to suspend Russia from the group of G8 advanced economies? Well, I was one of the first people to say that I thought it was unthinkable for the G8 to go ahead as planned. We were one of the first countries to suspend all preparations for that G8, and I strongly support the G7 meeting, G7 meeting of countries that will take place on Monday. I think it's important we move together with our allies and partners, and I think we should be discussing whether or not to expel Russia permanently from the G8 if further steps are taken. That's the meeting we'll have on Monday, and I think that's the right way to proceed. Dr. Julian Huppert. Thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I add my words to the support that's been given to Tony Benn? He was a great man. It was my pleasure to work with one of his sons for a number of years on science policy, Stephen. He's been with him. Mr. Speaker, lifting the income tax threshold to £10,000 so far has lifted 2.7 million people, poorly paid people out of paying any income tax, making a difference yeah, to them. Yeah, 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 is, the, yeah. is the Prime Minister pleased he abandoned his pre election objection to this and is implementing an excellent Lib Dem policy? Yeah. <laughs> What I think the honourable gentleman, um, who always brings the house together in his usual way, what I'm sure we can, um, <laughs> what I'm sure we can agree on, is that it has been an excellent move by a Conservative Chancellor in a coalition government to make sure that the first £10,000 of income you earn, you don't pay tax on, and that benefits people earning all the way up to £100,000. That is worth, so far, over £700 to a, a typical uh, uh, income tax uh, payer, and it's highly worthwhile, and, and I look forward to hearing what the Chancellor has to say. Sir General Kaufman. Is the Right Honourable Gentleman aware that this week I have received from a Palestinian friend 
an email which tells me the Israelis have assassinated a friend in his house and another brother of a friend has been shot dead by the army. So we have spent our time from one funeral to another. When the Right Honourable Gentleman was in Israel last week, did he raise with Netanyahu this constant stream of killing of innocent Palestinians by the Israelis, and what is he going to do about it? Well, I didn't raise that specific case, uh, which the Right Honourable Gentleman quite rightly raises in this House today, but I did raise uh, with the Israeli Prime Minister the importance of how the Israeli, uh, Israelis behave uh, in the West Bank and elsewhere. I raised the issue of settlements, which I believe is uh, unacceptable and needs to stop. But I was also strongly supporting both the Israeli Prime Minister and the Palestinian President in their efforts to find a peace. There is a prospect and an opportunity now, because the Americans are leading a set of talks that could lead to a framework document being agreed, and I think it's in everyone's interest to put all the pressure we can on both the participants to take part and to get on with these negotiations, which would mean so much, I believe, to ordinary Israelis, ordinary Palestinians, and indeed the rest of us. Andrew Stevenson.